We live in what historians may someday call the fossil fuel age. Today, coal, oil, and natural gas supply 93% of the world's energy. Power, uh, energy. Water power accounts for only 1%, and the labor of men and domestic animals, the remaining 6%. Our country, with only 6% of the world's population, uses one-third of the world's total energy uh, input. Uh, with high energy consumption goes a high standard of living. Truly, the humblest American enjoys the services of more slaves, i.e. energy, uh, than uh, were once owned by the richest nobles and lives better than most ancient kings. In retrospect, and despite wars and revolutions and disasters, the, hun the hundred years just gone by may well seem like a golden age. Whether this gold golden age will continue depends entirely upon our ability to keep energy supplies in balance with the needs of our growing population. Before I go into this question, let me review briefly the role of energy resources in the rise and fall of civilizations. Uh, possession of a surplus energy, possession of surplus energy is, of course, a requisite for any kind of civilization. For if man possesses merely the energy of his own muscles, he must expend all his strength, mental and physical, to obtain the bare necessities of life. Surplus energy provides the material foundation for civilized living, a comfortable and tasteful home instead of a bare shelter, attractive clothes instead of mere covering to keep warm, appetizing food instead of anything that suffices to appease hunger. Man's first step on the ladder of civilization dates from his discovery of fire and his domestication of animals. A reduction of per capita energy, energy consumption has always in the past led to a decline in civilization and may and a reversion to a more primitive way of life. For example, the exhaustion of wood fuel is believed to, to have been the primary cause, primary reason for the fall of the Mayan civilization on this continent and of the decline of once flourishing civilizations in Asia. India and China once had large forests, forests as did the Middle East. Deforestation may not only deforestation not only lessened the energy base but also had a further disastrous effect. Lacking plant cover, soil washed away, and with soil erosion the nutrition, nutritional base was reduced as well. Another cause of declining civilization comes with the pressure of population on available land. Our civilization rests on a technological base which requires enormous quantities of fossil fuels. What, what assurance do we then have that our energy needs will continue to be supplied by fossil fuels? The answer is, in the long run, none. The earth is finite. Fossil fuels are not renewable. In this respect, our energy base differs from that of all earlier civilizations. They could have, main, they could have maintained their energy supply by careful cultivation. We cannot. Fuel that has been burned is gone forever. In the face of the basic fact that fossil, fu fossil fuel reserves are finite, the exact length of time these reserves will last is important in only one respect. The longer they last, the more time we do have to invent ways of living off renewable and substitute energy resources and to adjust our economy to the vast changes which we can expect from such a shift.